ओं स्वस्तिनाद्रो वृद्धश्रम स्वस्तिना पूजा विश्ववेदा स्वस्तिनस्ताक्षोरिष्ठने स्वस्तिनो बृहस्पतिरदा तो ओं नारायणा नम आचमन ओं केशवाय नम आचमन करिय ओं नारायणा नम गोविंदय नम माधुर्जी जी हस्तो प्रक्षालन भगवदगीता पाठ Chapter Three: Karma Yoga. Arjuna said, "O Janardhana, the Kesavas, why do you want to engage me in this ghastly war- warfare? If you think that intelligence is better than fruitive work, my intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions. Therefore, please tell me." decisively which will be most beneficial for me the supreme personality of god had said o sinless arjuna i have already explained that there are two classes of men who try to realize the self some are inclined to understand it by empirical philosophical speculation and others by devotional service not by merely substaining not by merely abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection everyone is forced to set everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature therefore no one can refrain from doing something not even for a moment one who restrains the senses of action but whose mind dwells on the sense objects certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender on the other hand if a sincere person tries to control the active senses by the mind and begins karma yoga that is in krishna consciousness without attachment he is by far superior perform your prescribed duty for doing so is better than not working one cannot even maintain one's physical body without work work done as a sacrifice for vishnu has to be performed otherwise work causes bondage in the material world therefore o son of kunti perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction and in that way you will always remain free from bondage in the beginning of creation the lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for vishnu and blessed them by saying be thou happy by this yagya because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation the demigods being pleased by sacrifices will also please you and thus by cooperation between men and demigods prosperity will reign for all in charge of the various necessities of life the demigods being satisfied with the performance of yagya will supply all necessities to you but he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief the devotees of the lord are realized from all are released from all the kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin all living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from rains rains are produced by performance of yagya and yagya is born of prescribed duties Reg- regulated activities are prescribed in the vedas and the vedas are directly manifested from the supreme personality of the godhead consequently the all pervading transcendence is eternally situated in sets of in acts of sacrifice 
my dear arjuna one who does not follow in human life the cycle of sacrifice thus established by the vedas certainly leads a life full of sin living only for the satisfaction of the senses such a person lives in vain but for one who takes pleasure in the self whose human life is one of self realization and who is satisfied in the self only fully satiated for him there is no duty a self realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties nor has he any reason not to perform such work nor has he any need to depend on any other living being therefore without being attached to the fruits of the activities one should act as a matter of duty for by working without attachment one attains the supreme kings such as janak attain perfection solely by performance of prescribed duties therefore just for the sake of educating the people in general you should perform your work whatever action a great man performs common men follow and whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts all the world pursues o son of path there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary systems nor am i in want of anything nor i have i have a need to obtain anything and yet i am engaged in prescribed duties for if i ever failed to engage in carefully performing prescribed duties o partha certainly all men would follow my path if i did not perform prescribed duties all these worlds would be put to ruination i would be the cause of creating unwanted population and i would thereby destroy the peace of all living beings as the ignorant perform their duties with attachment to results the learned may similarly act but without attachment for the sake of leading people on the right path so as not to disrupt the minds of ignorant men attached to the fruitive results of the prescribed duties a learned person should not induce them to stop work rather by working in the spirit of devotion he should engage them in all sorts of activities for the gradual development of krishna consciousness the spirit soul bewildered by the influence of false ego thinks himself the doer of activities and are in act actually are in actuality carried out by the three modes of material nature one who is in the knowledge of absolute truth o mighty arm does not engage himself in the senses and sense gratification knowing well the differences between work and devotion and work for fruitive results bewildered by the moods of the material nature the ignorant fully engage themselves in material activities and become attached but the wise should not unsettle them although these duties are inferior due to the performer's lack of knowledge therefore o arjuna surrendering all your work unto me with full knowledge of me without desires for profit with no claims to proprietorship and free from lethargy fight those persons who execute their duties according to my injunctions and who follow that this teaching faithfully without envy become free from the bondage of fruitive actions but those who out of envy disregard these teachings and do not follow them are to be considered bereft of all knowledge be fool be fouled be footed and ruined in their endeavors for perfection even a man of knowledge acts according to his own nature for everyone follows the nature he has acquired from the three modes what can repression 
accomplish. There are principles to regulate attachment and aversion pertaining to the senses and their objects. One should not come under the control of such attachments and aversions because they are stumbling blocks on the path of self-realization. It is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties even though faultily than another's duties perfectly. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duties for to follow another's path is dangerous. At this stage Arjuna said, O descendant of Varshni, by what is one impelled to sinful acts, even unwillingly, as if engaged by force? The Supreme Personality of God had said, It is lust only, Arjuna, which is born of contact with the material mode of passion and later transformed into wrath, and which is the all-devouring sinful enemy of this world. As fire is covered by smoke, as a mirror is covered by dust, or as the embryo is covered by the womb, the living entity is similarly covered by different degrees of dislust. Thus, the wise living entity, pure consciousness becomes covered by his eternal enemy in the form of lust, which is never satisfied and which burns like a fire. The senses, the mind, and the intelligence are the sitting places of this lust. Through them, lust covers the real knowledge of the living entity and bewilders him. Therefore, O Arjuna, best of the Bhratas, in the very beginning, curb this great symbol of sin, that is lust, by regulating the senses and Slay this destroyer of knowledge and self-realization. The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And the soul is even higher than the intelligence. This is the 42nd text of chapter 3 the 43rd and the last chapter of chapter 3 our last text of chapter 3 is thus knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses mind and intelligence o mighty arm arjun one should steady the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence that is krishna consciousness and thus by spiritual strength conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust.